Today, the 26th of June, is the International Support Don't Punish Campaign Day. For over a decade, the Support Don't Punish campaign has resourced a global, decentralized network of change makers in drug policy reform and harm reduction to reduce stigma, end violent and neglectful policies and practices against our communities, and, sure, and to ensure redress for all. Let us once more mobilize in transnational solidarity to reclaim power and rights for our communities, nurture our growing movement, and demand accountability and redress. Isn't that an amazing message from the Support Don't Punish campaign? Fields of Green for All has been part of this campaign since 2014, and we're very proud of it for its grassroots focus and the fact that even in our ca cannabis world, which is a microcosm of the world drug policy arena, this message of support don't punish is so very, very important because today is also the, and wait for it, long uh, title, the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. And that is uh, presented by the United Nations. The International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking, or World Drug Day, is marked on the 26th of June every year to strengthen action and cooperation in achieving the goal of a world free of drug abuse. Now, if we read the Support Don't Punish campaign's little preamble and we read the United Nations little preamble, we get somewhat of a disconnect. And this whole idea of achieving the goal of a world free of drug abuse is a complete fantasy. It is a vision of utopia that we are never ever going to achieve. And for as long as the so-called war on drug persists, throughout our world, our work will never be done. So here we have it from the United Nations, stigmatizing language, thinking that we can actually end uh, drug abuse worldwide. But there is hope at the United Nations, because at the uh, at C&D in 2024, 20, uh, in March, on the very last day of the Commission on Narcotic Drugs, we saw the, the C&D universally declare that the words harm reduction would also be included in U UN language going further. So we hope that maybe in a year's time when we have a World Drug Day again, this sentence of achieving the, world, the, the goal of a world free of drug abuse will maybe be replaced by achieving a world free of abuse against people who people who use drugs now coming back to our cannabis world here in south africa i've got a whole lot of tabs open here on my laptop and we have to think of where we are now in this cannabis world having had our cannabis for private purposes act signed into law on the 28th of may 2024 where are we going now how can we support don't punish our local cannabis communities and particularly those most vulnerable amongst us. How can we support them and not punishing them by stopping the cops? How come we are still getting uh, reports of busts and with a street value of millions and millions of rand and drug manufacturing equipment um, confiscated when all it was was equipment in order to make concentrates, probably in order to make cannabis medicine. Um, and we're still waiting because there's no registered cannabis med medicine in South Africa. So if we had to if we had to look at the situation more closely, we can go to the State of the Nation Address website page. And this is the website page of our South African government. And it says here that the Cannabis Master Plan aims to increase the quality and variety of cannabis being produced for local and international markets. Well, you know, it's a bit like a world free of drug abuse. You want to increase the quality and variety. I think we have one of the largest varieties of cannabis in the world here in South Africa, being one of the biggest producers in the world. And 
the government are saying we are moving to create the enabling conditions for the sector to grow. Well, it certainly isn't enabling if you're arresting our communities every day, confiscating the equipment, traumatizing them, putting them through the expense of legal representation, and, and just generally being um, non-enabling of our cannabis sector. The Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development and the Department of Health will address existing conditions for the cultivation of hemp and cannabis to allow outdoor cultivation and collection of harvests from traditional farmers. Well, government, how are you going to do that? Because our Cannabis National Master Plan has, um, has faltered. We haven't seen any progress on this master plan. The master plan is also as utopian as the United Nations statement. It is as a utopian as our drug master plan, which comes out of the Department of Social Development. Politically here in South Africa, we're in a transition. We don't know who are going to be the ministers of agriculture, the ministers of health, the ministers of social development, who are all incredibly important stakeholders in this road to cannabis freedom and economic prosperity for our communities. The, the National Cannabis Master Plan has as its purposes and objectives the purpose of the master plan is to provide a broad framework for the development and growth of the South African cannabis industry in order to contribute to economic development, job creation, inclusive participation, rural development and poverty alleviation. Well, we haven't seen much of that yet because as we know, every single day, although we don't have a Minister of Police at the moment, um, the police are arresting our communities left, right and centre. And we still see an enormous amount of stigma around the use, cultivation and trade in our cannabis plant in South Africa. And if we look at the Drug Master Plan, which is more of an um, umbrella plan, we can see here that they said, Currently, the relevant department, as outlined in the ruling that meant the Constitutional Court ruling, are in the process of aligning specific sections on the cited legislations to comply with the ruling and to make sure there is no ambiguity in the possession and private use of cannabis. No ambiguity. That's all we've got. We've only got ambiguity because we know when it comes to the private use and cultivation of cannabis that the whole model of the Dacha Private Club, of the Cannabis Social Club, is central to the prosperity of our leg legacy cannabis communities. And they say that they are going to be enabling this, but at the moment the government are still fighting us in court in the Hayes Club case. We are still having to raise money from our communities in order to support Neil and uh, his co-defendant in uh, the Hayes Club case. So really, uh, impl uh, implementing interventions to curb cannabis abuse, says the Drug Master Plan. Well, you know, when it comes to harm reduction, it isn't only about cannabis abuse. It isn't only about the children, because harm reduction is not necessarily about the children. The children have been taken care of, for sure. Our new Cannabis for Private Purposes Act has a whole big paragraph about the children and how they're going to be protected. The Centre for Child Law achieved a constitutional precedent um, uh, prohibiting the criminalization of, of children in South Africa. So we are much further along the road when it comes to children and cannabis than we are with adults and cannabis. The harm reduction is really the subject for another video. It is a huge topic, it is quite complicated, but it is the one area that our cannabis community can really help. As we've always said, there are two sides to this cannabis struggle in South Africa. There is changing the law and there is changing hearts and minds. When you are sitting at Sunday lunch with your family and the subject of cannabis comes up and people start to giggle and people start to, oh no, we don't want to talk about that. Stand up, stand up for our favorite plant. Reduce the stigma, support your use of cannabis. Don't punish yourself by increasing the stigma and saying, oh, we can't speak about that. Oh, we'll just giggle about it because we feel uncomfortable about it. 
because as cannabis users, we need to identify as drug users in order to tackle this problem of stigma. And we rely on each and every one of, of you in South Africa, in Africa and around the world to work together in small little ways that will add up to reducing the stigma. So while we are certainly not never going to achieve a world free of drug abuse, and where we certainly are seeing the stigma of cannabis abuse, as we see in the uh, National Drug Master Plan, we can do our part as Fields of Green for All down here on the southern tip of Africa to support Don't Punish. It is not a simple thing. It is not something that you can just say, oh, well, we just need more rehabs or, oh, well, we just need to stop drug abuse. This is a complicated nuanced dance to the finish line and let us just keep playing the music for that dance and we'd like to thank you everybody for supporting Fields of Green for All, for supporting this campaign over the years, over a decade it's been running and for supporting our work at the United Nations to change that stigmatizing language. So today let's think of all of those people who have been affected by the war on drugs, let's think of the people who are still, every single drug, including cannabis, is still prohibited in their countries. Let's just take a moment to remember how far we've come and how far we still have to go.